Tim, High Noon's Vinyl, your friendly neighborhood vinyl guy, back again. Um, thank you for joining in again. Uh, so this is episode three, but I've changed the name because, uh, like a dumbass, I didn't research the name of my project, and there is a show out there called The Singles Project. Who knew? So uh, we're just going to call it Tim's Singles Collection. So going forward, that's what it'll be called. Same, same content. I'm actually going to try to put them all together in a playlist. That way, if you're catching it in some version or another, you will eventually be able to see them all, if you're so interested. So, uh, some needle drops today. Um, I'm sure the title has got you a little confused, and that's what I like to do. That's what we like to do around here. But let's kick it off. Um, Alphaville's Forever Young. It's a such a classic song of the 80s. This was actually a reissue of this song uh, when they did their singles collection LP, they reissued this. So, um, picked that one up in a nice collection. Um, we all should know this one. Skyrockets in Flight, Afternoon Delight. Yes, the Starland vocal band. Um, we all know what that one's about, don't we? Um, keeping along with some of that, uh, you know, 70s stuff. The Love Machine from the miracles this is one of those like it's a two-parter you know side one side two um when i was djing one of the things uh one of the troubles i had was it took me forever to find a second copy of shout on 45 so i had it like uh, side one on side two uh was the other was, was part two and it was it ended right at now wait a minute so it was always uh uh, a fun either flipping or I would throw something in the middle just to confuse everybody. So um, always a good time there. Um, the Commodores, easy like Sunday morning. I mean, this is just one of those. It is a fantastic put it on, belt it out. Even if you don't have the greatest of voices, you're going to sing along with it. And you're going to sing along with it like one of those like if it's in the car you're gonna just you're gonna be you're gonna be holding concert because that's what it is um another one i picked up in a, in a, in a great collection this is uh the single sparks all you think about is sex this was recorded for a bbc rock hour show um that got put out on single um i don't know if it was ever officially released on a sparks album the b-side was uh the b-side is um uh, I wish you looked a little better. Um, you know, Sparks is one that I have a couple albums um, and, and always looking for more. Uh, just You just kind of admire their sound. Uh, so this is what I played at the top. Uh, this is Camouflage, The Great Commandment. Uh, the great uh, synth pop, um, new wave sounding dancer. Uh, this is a German uh, outfit. Came out in 1988, but... Tell me that doesn't sound like early Depeche Mode. Like, I mean, it literally sounds like they channeled, um, you know, uh, just can't get enough, speak and spell, uh, a broken frame era, and just said, we're running with it. Um, but it's it's a solid it's a solid tune. So, um, actually, I think I'm going to try to find the album on that one because I dug it. Um, and then speaking of sound samples, I got one here. Three from the Motels. Three from the same Motels album, All for One. Of, yeah, is it All for One? Yeah, All for, all for One. F-O-U-R. I see what you did there. So this was the one they got known for suddenly last summer. Huge smash. But they had a couple of follow-ups off of that album. Um, so L.A. But the one that I played, um, Take the L. Uh, so this was a minor hit. You know, probably got more traction because of the strength of the album sale um they desperately wanted a second single uh if suddenly last summer hadn't told convinced you to buy it already um but it's got a great hook uh which is what i give you um so take the l from the motels three from a fantastic album that uh, should probably be in your 80s collection Sticking 
with the 80s for a minute. I mean, a lot of my 45s, I'm not gonna lie, are, are 80s. And, and that's okay, because that's the era that, you know what, 80s 45s feel right to me. But this is Poison Arrow. I do have the ABC album, Lexicon of Love. Um, but if I see an ABC single, I'm gonna grab it. Uh, Poison Arrow was just a smash. Would love to get When Smokey Sings. Do I have When Smokey Sings on vinyl? On 45? I don't know. I have to look. This is, see, this is why I'm going through this, this project, because I can't remember all the 45s I have. Um, and, 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 well, I was going to say, and picture sleeves too, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so uh, the next one is Robert Palmer, You Are In My System. Um, so this was like 82, 83. So this was in between that period where he had a, a, a pretty big hit with Dr. Doctor. And then he kind of rekindled that, that hit maker status with the Riptide album and addicted to love and, you know, and it kind of you know, had something to just kind of take, take off. But to me, he was always very consistent with that, that I, I, can't, I can't even call it po synth pop or whatever, but he definitely crossed that border of new wave sounding a little bit. I mean, you had that with, he just made everything danceable. It just made everything great. And if it was a slower song, it was still very enjoyable. And I just felt like during this time, you know, he, he kind of, he, he was out there. He was putting out records, but he, uh, he slipped, slipped around the radar a little bit, which was sad. Um, speaking of monster 80 songs, this was their one big hit in the U.S. And, and for shame, because this is a great band. And that saga is on the loose. I mean, I thought about actually doing a, uh, a needle drop of this one, but everyone knows this one. This is another one of those singles that I see everywhere. Um, I'm happy with mine, but if I ever saw, I don't even know if there is a picture sleeve, but if I had a picture sleeve, I'd probably pick that up. So another one I'm going to give you a taste of is Spandau Ballet. Not true. We all know true. There's a th thrill in my hand and a pill on my tongue. Yeah, so, uh, but this was communication off the same album, True, and and this one, minor hit, you know, and again, probably that MTV generation helped push it. Um, but this was when you know one hit could lead to three, even if the other ones didn't have the same marketability because it was something new. It was like you know, but the problem was was the sustainability and the fact that during the '80s we were moving for that next thing so fast that bands like Spandau Ballet, if you didn't have another follow-up with it that was just crushing, you kind of you kind of fell on the wayside. But check out this one. This one's another cooker. I love this song, uh, Communication. So check that one out. Communication let me down and I'm As I was going through, you know, and I'm going through and I'm cleaning and I'm logging and, I'm, you know, if it's a picture sleeve, I always try to put a generic in to save the picture sleeve. I was gobsmacked at what this sells for. I would have never guessed it in a million years. I got it in this, you know, I keep referring to this one big collection. It was a collection of records. It was, it had to be over 145s. Um, I think the picture that sold me on it was uh, seeing Levert. And I was like, I I'll take that, you know. It was it was a bunch of them for like 50 bucks. And it was like in and out. It was a great transaction. And I dug off of it for a hot minute, um, just kind of sorting through it. And um, this was one that was in there. And I just could not believe logging it that it was, sells for like 30 bucks. And that's Don't Change by NXS. And this would have been still the nx like the australian looking nxs like they were dressed kind of like like if you watch the video they kind of dress like dexie's midnight runners and it's like you look at it go that's michael hutchins uh, he didn't clean up he cleans up a lot better than that um still a good looking man you know and i've i've mentioned that before but um no it's just i was shocked that this single goes for i don't know like 30 bucks um in fact a dear friend of mine is looking for a copy so um keeping an eye out but uh this this is and again this is one of those bands that you know 
would want their albums, love all their music, but they feel their singles feel right on 45. The Curly Shuffle novelty song. I had never seen the picture sleeve when I had it before. It was in just the Atlantic Records company sleeve. And uh, when I saw that there was a picture sleeve for it, I made sure I kept that. A uh, couple songs that I kind of alluded to in the title um, that were Ice Cube approved. One is Hip Hug Her, obviously the classic from um, Booker T and the MGs. This copy is beat to hell, but I'm glad to have it. Uh, so this one and, um, which I tried to give you a sample to get you dancing, uh, Brick by Daz. This one was actually blocked in some areas, so I just kind of took it out. Uh, both of these were, were big samples for Ice Cube on his Death Certificate album. Uh, this one most famously for... Uh, probably one of the best diss tracks of all time, No Vaseline, but this one was on a song called Giving Up the Nappy Dugout, which is funny in its own right. Um, but, I mean, just two funk soul classics. And I, I find that when I find stuff like that on 45, even if it's not in the best condition, I'm still going to pick it up anyway, because I'm an idiot and I have an addiction. Um, okay, so another another one I'm going to give you a taste of. Uh, so Steel Breeze, Dreaming is Easy. Steel Breeze was kind of one of those. Um, I think they had a couple of albums. Their first one made a little bit of noise, and it just they just kind of seemed to, to, to falter from there. It was that crossover of that new wave post-punk rock. Not like new wave rock or, or new wave rock whatever, but it, it had that element to it. It was kind of like a step down from the cars, kind of think the romantics. Um, and, and, and in 1982, I mean, you had so many different things coming at us from, from different things. They just, I, I, I just don't think they had the hooks to keep up with some of these other bands. But trust me, you'll, if you don't recognize it from the title, you're gonna recognize it from this drop. Guaranteed. <laughs> in your head for a while hey emma ides a march vehicle we don't need to talk about that it's a jim peter at classic i mean this is this is blue-eyed soul at its finest out of illinois and what can you say about this that hasn't already been said nothing because it's a classic um and that's a great record another classic ring my bell i mean what can you say about anita ward um this is just the this is one of those ones that if you're having a, a I kind of hate to say oldies dance night because that makes me feel like I'm spending an in, the records from the 50s, uh, which is what I did when I was a DJ. And it was like, hey, we want an oldies night. Oh, 50s and 60s hurt. Now it would be this and I would feel old. But uh, ring my bell. Mm, mm, mm. Um, another great single. Evil Woman from ELO. Uh, you know, they for for a band as revered as they are, it's so funny to think that while they have singles, they didn't have many that were like stratospheric. But Evil Woman was definitely one of them. And that's one of those ones that when I play, it gets stuck in my head for a while. Uh, Kansas, Carry On My Wayward Son. I've always loved this company sleeve for uh, Kishner Records, uh, which is where uh, Kansas was, was signed to. Subsidiary of CBS. Um, I remember seeing this uh, sleeve when I was a kid. My uncle, my, my grandmother's brother, my great uncle, uh, as a side gig, he would... Uh, I think they, I think they leased records to jukeboxes and bars in the area. So he would have to rotate them out, and then when they were rotated out, 
he would send me boxes of these things. And I would get like five, six, seven copies of the same thing in these boxes sometimes. And it didn't matter to me. God, I wish I still had them because there were some great ones in there. But I remember seeing the company sleeve for this for uh, Kansas's Dust in the Wind. And so um, I love that one. So let's take you back. Early 80s. Uh, television really was, at least for my generation, um, it was one of those things that you had to watch because repeats and things like that. Um, you never knew when it was going to get repeated, if it ever did. So it was like if it was Tuesdays at 8, you had to watch it because everybody's going to be talking about it the next day. You know, now we have streaming and we can binge watch stuff, which is nice. But um, there was something magical about being at home at a certain time to watch a program or you, you, you missed it. And when you heard this theme song, I bet a lot of you who are watching now probably were running through the house or jumping over the couch to get the seat before it started. Which theme song? Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? Classic. So this one's actually a twofer. You know, they they started in at some point, kind of giving like these reissues some new life, and we're like, we're gonna give you two gold hits for the price of one. Um, and this is no different. So this was from Electra. Um, so obviously the greatest American hero. But on the B side, you got the theme from Mike Post for Hill Street Blues, um, which was another one of those like Thursdays at ten would send you, you know. If you were old enough to watch it, was it nine or ten? I don't remember, but um, that was another classic show. Escape Club, Wild Wild West. This is one that I know I've seen in a picture sleeve a million times, um, and I don't know why I don't have it in a picture sleeve, but I would prefer it in a picture sleeve. Um, this is another one that I thought I've seen in a picture sleeve before. I know I've seen their other single in a picture sleeve. This is uh, Broken Wings from Mr. Mister. Again, um, this album was their breakout, probably their best. I have the follow-up to this, to this album as well. I have both of them. And that third one, it's okay, but it, there's nothing that stands out. But this this album right here, Welcome to, Welcome to Wherever You Are, I think is what it's called. Am I right? Uh, Welcome to the Real World. That's what it is. Uh, fantastic album. Some great singles. This, Kyrie. Fan just great stuff. You sexy thing. Um, you're seeing a few of these that have this this cross, this J.A. I mean, that stuff never bothers me. And the reason why is because when I was spinning, especially on 45s or singles, you can't always read the font in those things and you can't always trust when you're putting things back so fast how you're how you're putting them back so i always used to put like a sticker on the side i needed to play um you know and i know there's there's all we people are probably cringing right now um but it, it you know it 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 was way to let you know very quickly whose it was, or, you know, what side to play. But you can't deny Hot Chocolate, You Sexy Thing. Just a fantastic one. Uh, Expose. So this one's kind of cool. Uh, so this is Point of No Return. And when I picked this up, two surprises. So there was a sticker on the Point of No Return that, sa that says that this is a radio broadcast version, not for resale. So it was given for... Uh, radio demonstration and when I got it there was something really weird about it and when I was investigating the b-side which I think is called extra extra there was a second label stuck to it you know common common thing it happened you know you're printing up these by the the millions right it's gonna happen so uh, if you have a copy of 
uh, this 45 and you um, don't have your extra extra single uh, sticker, I got it. It's safe. It's with me. Um, but again, this is just one of those, to me, this is one of those like uh, roller skating rink classic songs. Um, a song that would send my wife into an absolute tizzy because she hates it. She hates the idea that I just died in your arms tonight. She's like, what? So I always make fun of her when this one comes on whenever the 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and today station. I'm like, hey, they play in your song. She's like, yeah, good. Yep, you do. Pretty sure I have another copy of this somewhere, and it's a it's a European press. But uh, Banana Ram is Venus. I mean, how could you escape this one? Um, 80s nights, 80s parties aren't complete without this. And we're going to end it off with another band I think just sounds absolutely fantastic on 45, except for this one for some reason. This is like my third copy of Alive and Kickin', and I swear each one at the beginning, because it's so soft, has had groove burn of some sort. And I don't know what it is about A&M, but I've seen that regularly, okay, not with all A&M records, but it seems like they're 45s. I've had several of them in my life that are prone to groove burn at the beginning. Anybody else? Would you collect 45s? So, but that's it, another 30 in the books. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed the needle drops. Hopefully you saw a few things that kind of sparked your interest. Um, thank you for the feedback. I'm having fun with this. It's, it's definitely something that's keeping me focused on cleaning up these 45s, getting them logged, um, and just sharing a little bit of fun with them. Um, it's a format that uh, I love. It's a format that I have a lot of history with. And it's a format that sadly is probably going to put me in the poorhouse at some point. But that's what we do. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I should have a regular uh, collection update this week. I've got a stack that I've already spun. I've got a few more I can add to it. Um, and it looks like somebody is going to pop in right now and say hi. Hello. There he is. So uh, from all of us to all of you, we love you. Take care. Peace.